Hello everyone, Tony, congratulations, you're going into space. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to find out what happens to a human if it is thrown into outer space without a spacesuit. <gasps> Hollywood movies have shown us a lot of different versions. According to films, people can freeze or burn. Can they boil inside or even burst into little pieces? Which of these ideas are true and which are false? We are about to find out. The first danger in outer space is, of course, sunburn. When we are on the surface of the Earth, the ozone layer protects us from the sun's dangerous ultraviolet radiation. But there is no such protection in space, so tanning will happen much faster. No, Tony. This is nothing like chilling on the beach. Open areas of skin will quickly turn red and blister because of severe burns. But ordinary clothes will protect you from radiation, so a fancy spacesuit isn't necessary at all. And for sure, you won't burst into flames and burn like in the movie Sunshine. And if an astronaut is in the shadow of our planet, the sun will not be able to harm them at all. The next misconception invented by filmmakers is that people can explode in the vacuum of space. Let's figure out what really happens there. When we are on the surface of the Earth, the atmosphere exerts pressure on us with an average force of 100 kilopascals. That's about 1 kilogram per square centimeter. But inside the body, we have our own pressure that balances out the external pressure, so we don't feel that load. In a space vacuum, there is no atmospheric pressure and the internal pressure begins to work against the astronaut. After about 10 seconds, the muscles swell a lot because the fluid in them expands. This is very painful, and the swelling will be accompanied by capillary ruptures and tiny hematomas, after which the skin will turn blue. So, an astronaut will be monstrously bloated, in a lot of pain, having a hard time moving, but they certainly won't burst. Have you seen the Marvel movie Guardians of the Galaxy? It showed us several times how a body thrown into space freezes almost instantly. Honestly, it's a lot easier to die of overheating in space than it is to freeze. Astronauts in spacesuits even have a special liquid cooling system to protect them from overheating. However, once in outer space without protection, the parts of the body covered with liquid quickly become cold. This is because the water evaporates very quickly and takes the heat with it. It will indeed be quite cold at this point, but once the sweat from the skin has completely evaporated, the body will begin to warm up in the sunlight. If, however, an outer space walk happens very far from the sun, the body will indeed cool down, but it will take hours, so you won't freeze instantly. Vacuum and solar heat are not the only villains trying to finish us off in space. There's also radiation. It is very generously shared by the sun, as well as other stars, galactic nuclei, quasars, and black holes. All of them constantly send their flow of goodness towards our planet. All this is called cosmic rays. On Earth's surface, we are protected by the planet's powerful magnetic field. But there is no such field in space. Mars, for example, doesn't have it. So building a colony there would be quite a challenge. An unprotected astronaut risks serious radiation exposure. So even if the poor person is quickly dragged back aboard the ship, resuscitated and returned to Earth, there is a risk that they will soon die from radiation poisoning and its consequences. And if not returned, a huge dose of radiation and the famous gamma rays will turn them into the Hulk. Then, with the help of superpowers, they will return to Earth, join the Avengers, and defend our planet from alien invaders. Sounds plausible, right Tony? Except for one little problem. They will die of overheating, severe edema, and lack of oxygen before they turn into a green supergiant. Now let's go deeper into the problem, or rather, into the human body in outer space. Because of the sudden drop in pressure, the victim of depressurization will inevitably experience various barrow traumas. This is the physical rupture of organs due to the difference in pressure between the external environment and the internal cavity. The first to be damaged are the eardrums and sinuses. And if the poor person has filled their lungs with more air, as we do before diving underwater, the lungs will rupture very quickly. Gases in the intestines and stomach will also cause internal injuries that will be accompanied by spontaneous defecation, vomiting, and urination. 
This, unfortunately, was proven on dogs. Basically, when a spaceship depressurizes, you should exhale and purge your bowels as quickly as possible. This will reduce the likelihood of internal injuries. By the way, limbs are not in any such danger, no matter what fiction writers think up. For example, in the story Kaleidoscope by Ray Bradbury, a poor man in outer space was attacked by a meteor shower, which first deprived him of his arm, then his leg. They were simply torn off. However, in reality, due to the fact that the meteorites and the flow are separated by a huge distance, to collide with even one of them is extremely unlikely, and stumbling upon two at once is like winning the lottery. Another risk that threatens people in outer space is the blinding effect of bright sunlight. In sci-fi movies, like the blockbuster Gravity, astronauts in spacesuits exchange meaningful looks with each other, so we, the audience, can recognize the actors. But if you look at a real space helmet, you'll see a yellow polarizing filter on it that protects astronauts' eyes from UV light. Because of this, you can't see the face inside the helmet, and if you look at it, you'll only see your own reflection. If you go into space without eye protection, damage to your retina from the ultraviolet radiation of the sun is more than likely, and that would lead to blindness. So, what else is going on with Tony? Ah yes, the foaming of the saliva. Due to the lack of external pressure in a vacuum, liquids begin to bubble and evaporate at lower temperatures than on the surface of the Earth. Therefore, it is likely that an astronaut overboard will experience an unpleasant sensation in the mouth due to foaming saliva. But some movies have shown the same thing happening to blood. However, the elastic walls of the blood vessels are able to maintain a high enough pressure. The boiling point of the blood is at about 46 degrees Celsius, while the body temperature will not rise above 37. However, even though the blood will not boil, individual small gas bubbles will still form in it. This is caused by ebulism, an effect similar to that experienced by scuba divers when surfacing too quickly from great depths. And if one such bubble hits the brain, it will cause a stroke, and if it reaches the heart, it will cause myocardial ischemia. Finally, let's talk about hypoxia. If an astronaut without a spacesuit ends up outside the ship, they will remain conscious for about 10 seconds. But after that, they will suffer from hypoxia or oxygen deprivation. Everything will go dark before their eyes, they would experience convulsions, then paralysis, and they would pass out. In the atmosphere of the Earth, people can hold their breath for about one or two minutes thanks to remaining oxygen particles in the blood that support the entire body. And the diver, Butamir Sobot, set a record and held his breath for 24 minutes and 33 seconds. However, you cannot stay conscious for more than 9 or maybe 11 seconds in a vacuum. The reason is not the lack of air, but the absence of external pressure. Because of this, oxygen from the blood actually begins to be sucked back into the lungs. It doesn't matter how well you can hold your breath, after about 90 seconds, the astronaut's brain will die from hypoxia, and the body will not decompose because all the bacteria inside will also die. If the crash occurred outside of the gravitational field of Earth or another planet, the astronaut will drift through space for millions of years until an advanced alien civilization finds them and puts them in a museum. By the way, NASA experts conducted experiments on dogs and monkeys and found that if you manage to return a person from the vacuum in less than 90 seconds, it is possible to revive them. There are special medications that will get the poor soul back on their feet. Naturally, the experiments were not conducted in space, and we already know that outside the atmosphere, in addition to the vacuum, there are ionizing radiation and ultraviolet radiation, which won't kill you in 90 seconds but will definitely cause irreparable harm to your body. Friends, if you are interested in the subject of space, watch the video with all of Super Tony's space adventures. He tried to establish a colony on Mars, visited a space station, a black hole, and even the edge of the universe. The link is right here on the screen and in the description below. Well, tell us in the comments what other hazards you think the outer space hides. The best guesses will appear in our next space video. Bye-bye!